If this is your first time, our heart is, is that when you leave here, first of all, we want to challenge you that, that, that you would come more than just one time because we can have an off day. All right, we can have an off day. But our, our heart is, is this, whether it's your first time or you come four or five times, and it, here's our heart, is that you would love God more, yeah. that you'll want to love his people more, yeah. that you would want to lead a God-first-centered life, that you want to put God first in your life, yeah. and that you would want to live in community that you want to live in the, in, with the body of Christ to do life together. I can tell you this, that you were not meant to live life alone. Because if you were, we would have no Eve. Come on. It, it, God even made Adam for what? Fellowship. Come on. So you're not meant to live life alone. And so that's our heart for you. And if you're watching online today or you'll be watching here shortly, you know, our heart is that you would come, to a, uh, come and visit us here in person, that we can encourage you, we can pray with you, and that we can, and that we can live together in community. Amen? You know, what I want to do is I, I, I want to start off in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse uh, 19. And if you're taking notes, and I hope that you are, I want to encourage you. It's okay to write in your Bible. Listen, I, I, have a, I have a phone, and, and, and on the first page is my Bible app, and I love my, my app, but I can tell you sometimes that, uh, that that can deter me from really opening the Word of God. Right? So I challenge you to bring the Word of God, underline, scribble in it, whatever you want to do, and also take some notes. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so what I want to do this morning is I just want to break down 2 uh, Timothy 2. And verse 19 through 21. And let me pray first and then we will get going. Father, thank you so much for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness. Father, we thank you for your word. For your word is anointed. And Father, as I speak your word, I ask you to let it go forth and accomplish everything it is set forth to do. Father, not what I wanted to do in their lives. Not what their uh, significant other their person that that is just wanting them to a person to be transformed but let it do what you've called it to do and father i, I ask you to water it, to grow it make it life applicable that it can be transforming to them father i ask you to wake up our spirit and let our ears be attentive as we speak your word and i ask you to let the anointing of god that's in me come out of me and upon me that i may speak your word in jesus name amen and amen i'm just wondering if somebody can give god seven seconds of praise this morning <laughs> Just seven seconds of praying. Listen. Listen, if this is your first if this is your if this is your first time here, you're gonna walk out and go, what just happened? Like all they do is they clap for Jesus. Like that's all they talk about is Jesus, and they clapping for Jesus. You know, it's a true, it's a true story. I, 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 it's a, I, listen, there was a family that came to the church. They came one time. He walked out of his car, and he said some things to his wife. He said, he really did. He said, what just happened? Because he encountered a God. There's so much Jesus in this room and people, amen. That gee, we just want to love you and get excited about Jesus. Come on, I better get going. I just better get going. So 2 Timothy 2.19 says this, nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm. Now, I want to stop right there and say this, is that it's not a, it's not a crack foundation. It, it, it's not a shaking foundation. It is a foundation that is that was firm and it will stand the test of time. Amen. It is the only thing that people have been talking about since the beginning of time, and they will continue talking about it till the end of time. Come on, somebody. Amen. That it's sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his. Now, if I can take a time out right here for just a moment, I'm taking one. Listen, I'm already taking a time out this morning. And if you don't know what a timeout is, it's just simply it doesn't go against my time and my preaching. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to take a whoop timeout right here. Because if the NFL can do it, I can do it, right? Like, just don't throw a red flag for a review, okay? Um, go fantasy football. Uh, um, so I want to say this is that we can fake it. 
we, we, can, we can put a show on, that, that, that we can come on a Sunday and have that face that says, I'm blessed. You know that face, right? You can come on a Sunday and you can wear your Sunday best clothes, but I have to let you in a little secret that God knows who are his. And everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Now, I want you to notice this part right here because this part is not a request. It's not one of those, well, let me just think about it and see how I kind of feel about that. And let's come together and see how I really, how really feel about it. It's not that. What it's saying here is a declarative statement. It's not, hey, you might turn away from. It is, I must turn away from wickedness. Everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness wickedness, turn away from sin, that the moment that you and I confess Jesus, the moment that you and I make the Lord, the Lord of our life, when you, you're submitting your life to Jesus, your will to Jesus, your plans to Jesus, your, your path to Jesus, you're, you're giving your whole heart to Jesus, and that the moment you say yes to Jesus, everything in your life now becomes about Jesus. And it's important to know that when you give your life to Jesus, you're not asking Jesus to come and you add him into your life. That's not what that says. It, when I say yes to Jesus, I'm saying, not, I'm saying no to something else. Uh, I'm going to say that again because that was so good. That I'm not, when I come to Jesus, I'm not taking Jesus and adding him into where I'm living in this moment. What, I, when I, what, what happens is, is when I say yes to Jesus, I'm saying yes to his word and yes to his plan, and yes to his will of Jesus. And I'm saying no to the things, the, the way I used to be living. Amen. Now in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use and some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself what, from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy. You can underline that in your Bible. Useful to the master of the house. You can underline that in your Bible and ready for every good Work. So when a person comes to Christ and he, and, 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 and if you will, a dishonorable, there's things that we can do that dishonor God, that when he comes to God and he asks for forgiveness, he is cleansed, he becomes honorable vessel, and that becomes to be so that he can be set apart and holy, that he can be useful for the master, and that he can be ready for every good work. Now, Unless you work in the industry that I work in. Now, this may surprise some of you, but I am a bivocational pastor. Well, what is a bivocational pastor? Well, I work for a corporation every day, five days a week, and then I'm a full-time pastor seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Just don't call me between the out. No. <laughs> <laughs> but according to the Word of God, we are vessels. We're vessels, that I am a vessel. You are a vessel. We are a vessel. And we need to understand that we are vessels. Somebody say, I'm a vessel. I'm a vessel. You are a vessel. You have been chosen by God. You are a chosen vessel. Listen to what, listen what Jesus says about Apostle Paul when he begins to talk about him in Acts 9. He says, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Someone needs to hear me this morning that you are a vessel. You are a chosen vessel. So if I'm a vessel and you're a vessel, then what is a vessel? A vessel is an instrument made to contain and to carry something of value. 
John, Jesus says this in John. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Jesus is saying, listen, I chose you so that you may carry something valuable. You know, in biblical times, when you talk about a vessel, some of the things they would put in a vessel is water. Now, I don't know about you, but water is pretty important. Like you and I, we really couldn't live without water. So it's something of value. Also, a vessel in those days, they would carry grain or they would carry salt or they would carry sugar or some type of spice that elevated food. Salt, it would preserve. Grain, it would sustain. Also, vessels, they would also carry what is called oil. Now, on a side note here, if you're taking notes, is this, is that when the Bible talks about oil, in the Bible, most of the time, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. So you can take that note. That's a little side note there. But in these vessels, that they would use oil, and oil was used for everything. It's used to prepare a meal. It's used to light a fire. It was used to protect your skin. It was one of the most valuable commodities in its time, in the biblical time. And I would even agree that it is still a very valuable commodity in our life today. When you talk about living in the abundance of life, and it is still, when it, when it, when it comes to, we have to understand that we are vessels, that we are chosen by God, we are chosen vessels of God, not just by God, but also we were made by God and for God. Come on. That we were made by God and for God. There is a reason that you have been created by God. It was for God and by God. You were to be a carrier of the Holy Spirit. You are to be a carrier of the gospel of Jesus. That the moment that you were saved and you were forgiven, the Bible says that we were sealed, that we were filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And we are vessels that contain the Spirit of God, that we, that, that the Spirit of God that lives us, that says that know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you, that wherever I go into this place, the Spirit of God goes with me. Wherever I go in this place, the Spirit of God goes with me that I'm carrying something valuable and I have to recognize that we have to recognize what a vessel is but we also have to recognize that a vessel is made that no vessel made itself no vessel just appears to exist no no vessel uh, can shape or make or or form itself no vessel can make it itself better in, fa in fact, I would even say this, that we can't make ourselves better. It's only the word of God. It's only the breath of life. It's only the Holy Spirit, the breathed and inspired word of God that can make me better. I can't make myself better. I can't, I can't shape me into the man of God or the woman of God that God has called me to be. But there is one thing I can do, that I can place my hand, my life in the hands of the one who can. Uh, I should get an amen right there. Amen. See, I, I, can't, I can't make myself into the man of God. or, or uh, to, 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 I can't make myself even do what God has called me to do until I put my life into the hand of the one who can. I am a vessel. See, a vessel is only as good as the hand of the potter who made it. I thank God that he made me. I thank God that I am made by God for the purpose of God, for the glory of God. Who else can make me better than God? Who, can, who, can, who, who is better than, than shaping me than God? See, a vessel exists for the maker's purpose and not its own. That's good right there. That, that's a little golden nugget that you can take home with you. That a vessel exists from the maker's purpose and not of its own. And I think sometimes we get this backwards. 
Uh, in Romans 9, it says, does not the potter have power over the clay? I mean, how often times will we think, well, you know, that pot right there has got some power over me. Now, it only has power over, this is a side note, okay? This is not even in my notes here. It only has power over you if it's somebody has a, a handle on it and about to swing it. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh, you got that now, huh? <laughs> Of course, the, of course, the potter has power over the clay. The clay has no power over the potter. And it's important for us to realize that we are vessels and that we were made for God and for God. That we don't exist for ourselves, but we exist for the glory of God. Come on, somebody. That I exist to serve God and the purpose of God in my life. That I have been set apart. I have been set apart by God and for God. I have been set apart to be holy. Yes. Come on. Yes. If I have to say it again, that I'm made by God, Amen. for Amen. God, Amen. chosen by God, set apart by God yes. to be holy. Just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So when we look at this verse, this should be our goal for every Christ follower. This should be our goal, not to be a better me, but to be more like Jesus. Uh, not to be a better version of me, not, to, not of who I once was, but to be more like Jesus. Are you with me, church? That we have to recognize that we can't be holy apart from Jesus. It is the work of God inside of me. It's the work of God that is inside of you that transforms you into the Christ-like image. But yes, we have a part to play. Say, I got a part to play. See, we have a part to play to yield to him, to submit to him, to surrender to him, to follow him, to obey as he leads, to lean into the conviction of the Holy Spirit, to honor and to value and to walk by his word according to his will. Yeah. Why? Because it is God's will that you should be sanctified, which means to set apart and be holy, that, that, you, would, that you should avoid sexual immorality. What that means is that we don't look like other people. We don't go where other people go. We don't, we don't do what other people do. We look different. Yeah. It just means that, that we have to learn to avoid situations where you know you will be tempted. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you here, my wife can testify. This year, I have traveled a lot. If you want to know how much I've traveled, I have been on a plane probably... Uh, almost 40 times in a year. So when I take off and land, it's one time, all right? So if you do the calculations, about 20 times I've, I've been on a flight back and forth. My wife can tell you that when I go and I leave and I'm done with uh, the, the place that I'm at and I got to go back to the hotel, unless I stop up and go to a sports memorabilia shop. <laughs> um, yeah. Amen. Amen. If you know anything about me, I'll start, I'm into this sports memorabilia thing, okay? All right, so, so my wife can tell you, unless I stop off there, I will go from the office, go to my hotel, drop off my bag, go and eat something, come back. I got to stop off at the front desk because they got them little snacks there. <laughs> I got to grab me a snack. And I grabbed me a water, a couple of them, and I said water. And I grabbed some snacks. I go up to my hotel room, and I lock myself in. The reason why I do that, because I'm not going to be tempted. I'm not going to go somewhere where the enemy can tempt me. Come on. I, I, I know, hey, I'm human. I, I'm human. For every man here, I'm going to tell you we're human. Amen. So I'm going to go hide myself. Listen, I even tell my wife. My wife, she'll be texting me at 9 o'clock. I'm not answering. You know why? I'm asleep. I'm trying to get home. I'm trying to get home to my wife. I'm trying to get home to my kids. I don't need somebody else trying to tip me to go to somebody else's house. Come on, somebody. That's why I, I guard myself. I, 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 listen, when temptation, you got to learn not to go to places where, you're, where you know you're going to get tempted. Oh, I know I'm preaching to somebody today. 
And when those temptations come, you just got to say no. You just got to say, oh, no. Verse 4 says that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Uh, you you might have missed that, but I want to tell you, it says that you should learn. That means these things are learnable. You can be intentional in these things. That, that the way where, you, where your body goes and where it does and what it says and, and what it's seeing and what it's doing, is you can learn to stop being in those places that are easy for you to be tempted. Because it is God's desire for you to be holy because he is holy. Now, I hope you're paying attention because I'm going to give you a little out here, okay? It doesn't mean that you won't miss the mark. It doesn't mean you won't miss the mark, but we just can't allow our failures to be the measure line for the rest of our life on the way we live for the rest of our lives. What I mean by that is just because you did it one time to go do it again. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying this morning is just because you did it one time, that means don't go back and do it. Come on. Don't allow the time that you didn't measure up to be the measure in which you live your life for the rest of your life. Listen, just admit that you missed the mark, ask for forgiveness, and move on. Why? Because just as he is holy, so shall you be holy. On a great house, there are some honorable vessels, and then there's some dishonorable vessels. Therefore, turn from being dishonorable. In fact, I, I want to move a couple of verses back to verse 14 in Second Samuel or Second Timothy, verse two, is where Paul is writing Timothy, and he says this. He says, "Keep reminding God's people of these things." He says, "Warn them." I'll say that again. He says, keep reminding God's people of these things and warn them. In fact, if you keep on reading 2 Timothy, it does mention how you can live a dishonorable life. But you and I are to be called sanctified, set apart for God, but also set apart from the world. This just jumped in my head. You know, I'm an alien of this world. I'm just passing through. Listen, I ain't never been on a UFO, but I'm an alien. You're going to go to that. They're going to say, well, there's some aliens in that church. Listen, that you have been anointed. His will is, is that you be set apart for God, but also a set apart from the world of, that, of things that dishonor him. There are things that you and I do, maybe not on a daily basis, but maybe on a weekly basis or sometimes in our lives that really displeases God. And he's saying this morning, listen, that you are called, you're anointed, and that I called you to be set apart from from the world to, to stop doing those things that dishonor God. In fact, King David, he asked a question. He says in Psalms 119, he says, how can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed, not just listening, but taking heed, taking a hold of it. That according to your word, with my whole heart, I sought after you. Let not me wander from your commandment, for your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. For you are a vessel made by God and for God to be set apart as holy, but also To be useful for the master. I've got to just really come out and tell you there was really no way for me to ask this question but just to ask you the question. Have you ever been there? Like, have you ever been, you want to ask somebody a question, and you're like, well, how can I ask the question without offending them? Huh? Like, you try to do that all the time, huh? Well, listen, if I offend you when I'm about to tell you, then you're just offended, okay? Are you really useful for the master? Are you really useful to the Lord? But before you say, yes, pastor, I am, you know, sign me up, pastor. Right? Because that's our first first, uh, 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 instinct is just to say, yes, I'm useful. I'm useful. Even I'm, I'm guilty of it. 
Like, like I started saying, yeah, I'm useful, God. I, I'm pastor of the church. Of course I'm available. <laughs> uh, just between 8 and 8 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm just not available, God. <laughs> I'm sleeping. You know you're sleeping too, God. <laughs> but are you useful? Right? So let me give you a little bit what I'm talking about when I ask the question, are you useful to the master? It means that I am available. It, it, it means that am I making a difference for God? It means that the people in my life are better because I am in their life. Not because of who I am, but because of God in me. And because now I'm in their life, God is in their life. It means that I'm not living my life for me. It, it means I'm living my life for the cause of Christ and for the sake of others. It means that when you look at my calendar, it means that the, the way I spend my time and the way I spend my money, when you take inventory of my life, you see that I'm not living my life for myself. It means that I'm not spending my money only on me. I'm not spending only my time on me. I'm engaged in working for the kingdom that matters. It means that I'm just not showing up on Sunday, but I'm serving on Sunday. It, doesn't, it means that I'm not just partaking of something, but I'm investing into something. It means that I rarely show up to church because why? Rare, let me rephrase that. It rarely means that I show up to church alone. Because why? There are people in my pathway that need Jesus. So I am always bringing somebody with me to the presence of God. Somebody that can engage with the Holy Spirit. Because their life is forever. I want them to forever be changed and transformed. That's what it means to be useful. I have a part to play. And I'm going to play it. It means that I'm going to play, I have a part to play. It might not be perfect. Amen. It might not be perfect, but I'm still going to play it because I'm a vessel. I've been made by God and for God to be set apart as holy, to be useful to the master, and to be ready for every. Good work. So how? How do I be this vessel? How, how do I be this holy vessel? How do I be this useful vessel? How do I be this ready vessel? What, what is the path that I, I can take to be this vessel to be ready for every good work? Well, for the next hour, let me give you my thoughts. Um, you, you know I'm not. I, I, listen, I've never, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a, I have only preached 45 minutes maybe twice at, 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 that I've been doing ministry. So don't worry about us going an hour, all right? Amen. Amen. Okay. So let me give you a few of my thoughts real quick with the remaining time that I have. A holy vessel is a humble vessel. See, we need to acknowledge who we are and whose we are. I'm a child of God. I was made by God for the purpose of God, to bring glory to God. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ that lives within me. Amen. Because when I think about who I really am, I am just the dust of the earth. Yes. And you know what surprises me? Nothing against you women. You know what, after I say this, just forgive me after that, okay? <laughs> I don't know why that we just spend so much time trying to make dust look good. Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, girl, I ain't talking about you. You just keep going, okay? As I tell you, you be you, okay? <laughs> Listen, it's so true. Well, we spend so much time trying to make this thing look good. Listen, I wake up and I look good. I don't know what y'all talking about. But see, when we recognize that we are just dust, 
that will humble us. Because then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into the nostrils the breath of life. And the man became ooh, a living being. That all come from dust, and dust we all return. Amen. Now, compare that of who we are, and compare that to who he is. Amen. For he is the everlasting God. He's the Lord Almighty. He's all-powerful God. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last, the always holy and perfect and righteous in all his ways. And by his will, he has created all things. He's the beginning of all wisdom, the power and strength. He's our only hope, and he's our ever-present in the time of help. Come on, somebody. That's who he is. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet on the rock. And he established my feet. A holy vessel is a humble vessel. It recognizes that the breath's in these long, uh, on these lungs. And it is the spirit that is alive and is working inside of me. That I'm just a piece of clay that he has chosen to be used for his glory. That he chose to use somebody like me. In 2 Corinthians 4, we're reminded that we have this treasure, the gospel, the spirit of God. But we have these treasures in earthen vessels that the excellence of the spirit, of the power may be of God and not of us. That we need to be reminded that we have, we are carrying value. That the anointing we carry, the gifts we carry, it doesn't come from you, but it comes from above. It's in you, but it comes from God. The anointing you carry, the talents you carry, it doesn't come from you, but it comes from God. Yes, it's in you, but it's not from you. It's from God. We can't get any gooder. I'm just saying if you're paying attention. Hmm. Like I live somewhere. We can't be good or any better apart from him. See, a holy vessel is a humble vessel, but a humble vessel is a broken vessel. See, the more you want to be used by God, just know the greater the breaking that will be required. Tony Evans said it this way, Dr. Tony Evans. He says, everybody wants the blessing, but nobody wants the brokenness. It's the brokenness that leads to the breakthrough. Yes. Everybody wants to be blessed, but nobody wants to be, go through the breaking. Yes. Nobody's grateful in the breaking, but when we come out of it, hello. Yes. See, it is the breaking. The potter can remake it and reshape it. Yes. I'm reminded of Jeremiah 18 when the Lord spoke to the prophet Jeremiah. And he tells Jeremiah, he says, hey, Jeremiah, I want to show you something. What I want you to do, Jeremiah, I want you to go down to the potter's house. So Jeremiah gets up of where he's going. He goes to the potter's house. And right there at the potter's house, he begins to take the, he sees the potter. He takes this clay and he's shaping it and molding it. And he's doing this in his pottery thing, you know. And he's doing it. And he looks at it. And it's marred. It's cracked. The Bible says, instead of throwing it away, because by the way, if the potter was grab some clay and, it would, and he'd make it, and if it wasn't good enough clay, he'd take it up and he'd throw it away. But the Bible says that he took it and he reshaped it and he made it into another. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, most of us in our current state, we are not ready to be used by God the way he wants to really use us moving forward. It doesn't mean he can't use us. I'm just simply saying that in our current state, we're not ready to do all that God wants for us to do. But by his making, by his breaking, and by his remaking. See, we don't really understand. I, I'm wondering, just listen. I'm going to be the first one to raise my hand. So you can either lie or you can join me, Okay. I'm just wondering how many people in the room ever raised their hands and said, God, just use me. Like, like, God, just use me. 
well, whatever it's for, God, just use me. See, we don't really understand what we're asking when we say, God, use me. Because, see, it will require a cutting away of some things that dishonor him. It's going to require some breaking of your own will for his will. Because in the process of that, it may bring you to a place you don't want to be. And that's on your knees. It may bring you to a place where you can't go any further but by him. See, a broken vessel is also an open vessel. It's saying, Lord, I am willing for you to have your way in my life. I am willing for you to do what you want to do in my life. I am open to your word. I'm open to your will. I'm open to your hand of correction if needed. Hello? I'm open to your instruction. I'm open to your conviction. I'm open to hearing your voice. I'm open to heeding to your voice. I'm open and I'm willing. I'm bringing in the plane. Maybe a little bit of turbulence. But it reminds me of a story in 2 Kings. Would the worship team make their way this way? And if you can stand to your feet this morning. It reminds me of a story in 2 Kings where a woman, where a woman's husband has just died the bill collectors are coming for, to get paid. Why would the bill collectors want to get paid? I just don't understand that. Every month. Every month. But they were coming to get paid. And she goes, finds Elijah, the prophet. She says, you know, my husband was a righteous man, lived for God. And now I got some people, they want to get paid. He says, what do you want me to do? And she says this, your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elijah said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars. And as each is filled, put it into one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons, and they brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her, Son, bring me another, another one. But he replied, There is no jar left. And I want you to see the last part of that. It says, Then the oil stopped flowing this woman here didn't think that she had a lot to give maybe you're here this morning thinking that you don't have a lot to give she didn't think she had a lot to offer just a little bit of oil in a jar she, see, you may be here this morning thinking man I don't have a lot to offer I don't really have a lot I only have a little bit in the jar I just want you to notice something here. That as long as she kept continuing to pour out what she had, she had something to give. You need to hear me that more this morning. It wasn't in the little. It was that she was continuing to pour out. And as long as she continued to pour out the empty jar, kept being filled and filled and filled. I believe this is a picture of you and me this morning. If I have to give you some encouragement today, if I have to challenge you this morning, if I, if I have to ask you to take this word and make it life applicable for your life in this moment, in this time, I believe this is what this is saying this morning. That you and I are vessels made by God and for God to be set apart for God, to be holy, 
to be useful for the master so that we can be ready for good 